God, I'm telling people to trace. I'm gonna get crucified! Beginning artists and beginning art. We've all been there. It's, it's a fun time. Everything from the cringy sparkle dogs to your edgy face. We've all pretty much been there. And today's video is going to be more focused on and directed at younger artists. Those who are still under two years of drawing and are probably stuck in one of the two phases of sticking to MS Paint or bitching about not having a tablet yet. I'm going to be outlining 10 simple mistakes beginning artists make and how to fix them. These are simple habits that I've seen people make and I've made myself that young artists do when they're beginning to draw. These habits tend to inhibit your learning process. For this list, I did 10 because that's the number of ideas I had before they became complete gibberish and me just talking on. Some of these points are going to be a bit longer than others. We're going to start off easy. They may still take effort, but they're pretty simple ones to line out. And then they'll steadily get more and more difficult as we go through the list. So without any further ado, let's get right into the list. I can't draw a long straight line, so maybe if I draw a bunch of really short ticks, it'll work out okay. The first mistake that I want to outline is called chicken scratches, or chicken scratching. This originates from the artist focusing on the details at the same time as the overall piece. Basically what ends up happening is the artist will use their pen, pencil, or stylus to make little ticks using their wrist to make up an overall line. This causes the lines to end up being fuzzy and disproportionate, and it makes the character's design look disproportionate and a bit off. The solution to fixing this is using the whole arm to draw the lines. A lot of your rotation is actually going to be in your shoulder when you draw. This will be hard at first because you're not going to be used to drawing overarching lines and stuff. But this is really important when you're getting to figures when you're going to want a smooth arcing line to create a general shape of an object. This will help your designs and your drawings look more dynamic and flowing. This is going to be hard at first. Most likely you haven't trained your shoulder to draw. You've probably been using your wrist most of the time. And in retrospect, you can still use your wrist to draw details. But if you're gonna to wanna to create an overall shape, you're going to wanna use more of your body to create it. Experienced artists are perfect. So a common misconception young artists have about experienced artists is that we don't have to erase because every line we make is perfect and every stroke we make with our brush is for a purpose and always lands 100% of the time, which is woefully inaccurate. The fact is you are going to erase so much, it's gonna be sickening. I have erased entire drawings because they were bad and I need to restart. So it comes back to don't be afraid to use the other end of your pencil. That is your lifeline. Erasing is not something that makes you any less of a person or any less of an artist. In fact, being able to admit that you're wrong and that you drew something wrong and just go back is going to make you improve a lot faster. I know what I'm drawing. I don't need no underlying structure. Just how I don't need no man. This next mistake is one that I see artists do even five years down the road. This one is not using construction lines or only using construction lines for the head. This makes the character look really off. In many cases, you're able to pull it off enough practice, but you need to know those lines are there in the first place. And if you don't know how those lines or how the structure or how like all the shapes go together, your character's not going to look as dynamic or as real and ground in reality as you could make it. The solution for this is using basic spheres, volumes, outline body parts, use them for the underlying construction of the character. A good way to get practice on this is if you're drawing animals or if you're drawing humans, look up reference images. Try to find the underlying shapes of different animals and things. A good way to do this for animals and for humans is to look at skeletal structure. For devices and stuff, they're already in basic shapes. So a sound system would be in a very rectangular cubic box, a TV would be an elongated box, and a helmet would just be a sphere cut along an edge line. You need to start breaking down objects and not just look at the big picture. This is extremely useful when you're starting to draw because it allows you to simplify things before you go into details. References are boring! This mistake leads in from the last one, which is not using construction lines, and that's not looking at references. This one's pretty simple. By not looking at references, you'll miss details and characteristics specifically to what you're designing, whether that's a car, wolf, person, toaster, shoe. The solution for this is really just go into Google Images and search references. 
to a certain respect, you'll find out what it looks like. Anything from images in real life to an artist you really like, I would consider that all fair game for references. Rule number seven of the zombie apocalypse, limber up. So this is another mistake that I see veteran artists make as well as beginning artists make, and this is not warming up. People tend to want to get right to the drawing that they had in their head. And if they do that without warming up, it may cause frustration, and here is why. Because you haven't warmed up your hand or your mind for the day's tasks, your drawing skills will not necessarily be ready for what you want to do. What I would suggest is do one or two quick doodles before you get into something that you really want to draw. That way you can get your arms and hand-eye coordination memory warmed up for the task that you're going to go ahead and do. Hey, and you never know, you might actually find some ideas when you're doing that in the first place. Oh man, drawing wolves are so cool. I think I'm gonna draw them for literally ever. This one is something that is very near and dear to my heart. And this mistake slash habit is something that I see beginning artists do in mass. And I've seen some veteran artists do too. Have you ever seen somebody who just draws a dog over and over again and they try to do something else and it still kind of looks like a dog? Yeah, well that's the mistake I'm talking about here. Trying to draw new things or not trying to draw new things. If you draw the same thing over and over again, all of your art will look the same. Everything will all blend together and this can be anywhere from a, the same pose, the same angle, the same species. God, the list can go on and on. The solution for this is pretty easy. Try new things. Draw different things. Find different inspirations. Find different things that you like. Draw something you wouldn't normally draw. Yeah, it's probably gonna look bad, but it'll help you diversify your artistic ability and it'll help diversify your brain into thinking about drawing different things. That way when somebody comes to you and asks, hey, can you draw this? It'll actually end up looking like what you're trying to draw. Draw new things. If you don't draw new things, you're not gonna improve. I hate charcoal! So here's a lead off from the last one. As many people don't try to draw new things, people also don't try new mediums. You get comfortable with one medium, therefore that's all you're good with. Because of this, you'll begin to start using habits that impede your art and your ability to improve. You'll get stuck in a rut and you'll still keep drawing the same thing over and over again. The solution for this is to try different mediums. If you do drawings with line work, try to do it in a painting style or try it without lines. If you do a lot of digital, then get out a piece of paper and an old shoot up pencil and start drawing traditionally. If you don't have a tablet and if you're stuck with traditional drawings or you're a broke ass college student like me, then get get some colored pencils or crayons and go, go ham. Somebody said the leg on my character looked bad, therefore they're a bully. Okay, this is one that I still struggle with, and that is not taking criticism, or getting really salty after taking criticism. Sometimes, people can be assholes. Plain and simple. And a lot of times, people use asshole behavior to hurt others to make themselves feel just a tad bit better about themselves. Other times, they're legitimately trying to help you improve, even if they're doing it in a way that may not come off like that. The mentality that I see a lot of beginning artists take is that everyone is out to bully them. Because of this, people get defensive, moody, and regain about as much tolerance as a car has to an oncoming train. The solution for this is you're going to have to take a hit. I've been given a lot of criticism in my time, some of it not even constructive, and I've had to use it as fuel to make my art better. I'm still improving and taking in all the information people have on my art, both good and bad, and you're always going to have to take that. It's one of the fastest ways to improve. Ah, oh, crap. A differing opinion. I can already hear the rumble of white knights coming for me. I can't honestly bring myself to tell people when they begin that they cannot trace art. The reason for this is because that would be hypocritical to how I started as well. Yes, I traced art when I was starting to draw. I'm pretty sure everybody who has ever done art has traced at least one thing. And you know why? Because when you trace something, you realize, oh, hey, it's not my head that's making my art absolute crap. Because if I can go over somebody else's lines and do the exact same thing, that means technically I have that skill. I just need to develop it. And that's what I think tracing is useful for. Granted, you need to be productive. I don't think it's productive for you to learn. I don't think it's productive for people to practice and you'll get torn apart by community after community if you practice it and reference it and say that it is your own art. The solution for this 
in my opinion, is to use pieces of art as inspiration. I do recommend heavy referencing, which is looking at another person's art and copying the pose or style as practice. But remember, that's what it is. It is just that, practice. I would not suggest claiming heavy reference images as your own art. That's, that's kind of stealing it. I can't tell people that you can't trace when I did it myself. And I don't think I would be where I am now if I didn't initially traced some terrible fan character God knows when how many years ago. Yeah, so this one's just straight up a warning. I, um, danced in a fursuit in this one, and it's, uh, kind of cringy. So yeah, heads up. It's just my art style. It's just my art style. It's just my art style. Fuck off. I actually was talking to one of my friends about this. He's into freestyle dancing and pretty good at it. One of the beginning crutches for dancers is that they can't move or know how to use a certain part of their body, whether it's their hips, hands, arms. Then they make a style that moves every other part of their body except the one they're not good at. This is the same with beginning artists. People don't know how to draw something correctly, so they draw it incorrectly and just say, it's my style. It's just my style. It's just my style. Oh, fuck. I am just a load of cringe today. The solution for this is a lot more theoretical than everything else on the list. And this is one that I kind of want to go into a little bit more because it's kind of how I develop my style. A proper style develops based off of the artist and their inspiration and things they like, not some hindering crutch that you don't think you can overcome. No artist ever stops improving. There's always something that you can improve on. There's always new things that you can try. I would never try to focus on a style. And if you are, try to make it more than one. The more varied you are, the better your art will become. I have multiple styles. In fact, uh, my t-shirt designing style is different than, say, my commission style, and my commission style is different than my painting style. In fact, some of you probably don't even know some of the art that I do because I tend to draw different things because it allows me to improve with my artistic ability and just keep things fresh. Again, this goes back to trying new things and learning new techniques. You should never look for a style. A proper style and the style that you like will change to the things that you like the most. That's due to it representing you and it representing the things you like. If you didn't like your style, then keep trying new things. And that's the main thing that I think I can get out of this whole list is try new things. It's important to keep broadening your senses and broadening aspects of your drawing, sketching, and everything. And this follows for most of your life too. You're not just going to be stuck doing the same thing over and over again. That's just boring. Try new things. Try new things. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful in some sense. And I'll see you on the next video, where we're going to talk about the basics of drawing and putting a couple of these tips into practice.